Over to you. Thank you. So, um, since it seems you all know each other, this <laughs> short intro, uh, I've never worked as an investment banker. <laughs> <laughs> At the very early days, I uh, started as an electrician in East Berlin at that time still. So then I was a board professor for computer science and uh, those guys usually found companies. <laughs> I did so too. So, um, and then I became a father and I decided not to work that much anymore, you know, being a professor and having companies at the same time. Um, and after my, I, I didn't know what to quit actually. So I sold the companies and I quit the, the job at university too. Um, so I didn't work for a while being full-time father. And um, when the kids got older, old enough, they didn't need me anymore that much. Uh, and actually I was running out of money. So <laughs> <laughs> I, I then started working as a freelance engineer and uh, not to work that much. I screwed up. I signed in with one of my biggest clients. That was Deutsche Telekom at that time. So I worked for their R&D department. Um, and uh, I didn't really work for Deutsche Telekom like in a normal day job, but I've, I created companies. I spent off companies from Deutsche Telekom, a couple of them. And the biggest one, the last one, is like what Sebastian uh, talked about the last two years or three years. That was called Emmer. That's where we met. I was the founder and the CEO of that company. And uh, that was uh, then screwed up again. <laughs> and I, uh, so Sebastian, as he said, stayed with Deutsche Telekom and I um, actually left and founded that company. So we actually created Automat at the beginning of the year. But as a matter of fact, the last five, six years, um, we have consumed a lot of what you call CPAS or I don't know the, about the terms, but um, we have tried to implement services um, using programmable telco. And uh, when I was invited, I was shocked that you have this uh, no bullshit. <laughs> That's difficult. So let's see how I. <laughs> so um, so um, from the other perspective, Automat is not trying to be a player in the market as being like CPAS or whatever it's called. Uh, it's an agency. Uh, we took the best engineers from the old good, good old days and found a private, um, privately held company. And we do develop for money. We do develop, automate, and, and host for money, or operate for money. And we do this uh, with based in Berlin. And we have an office in uh, Poznan, that's Poland. And we work with the old partners. I, I do work for like at least a decade now uh, in Poland and Turkey. So. Uh, it's really difficult to get good developers, experienced developers in Germany, at least for an affordable price. So there is like our partners that represent about a thousand developers in Turkey and Poland. And that's what we do. So I don't want to tell you more about what we do. Now more to the uh, topic of the, the speech. Uh, that's um, closing the gap on Twilio. The first thing I'll try is um, I have a a terminology that is uh, no bullshit, right? So that, that wasn't that difficult. Uh, that wasn't that easy. So this is what we've done. We belong to the people who actually try to consume uh, communication capabilities. And um, there are the players, let's call them the players, right? No logo player chart is, I, and what, what I try to introduce is, there are all the CSPs. So I guess it's already, already kind of a bad name. Um, let's call them the, bunch of people that actually have raw material. That's zip trunks, messages, mess, message trunks, number trunks, networks, <coughs> or they run on networks, but basically that's what they do. That's the carriers, that's the specialized providers like the, the, the asterisks and the, the PBX providers, etc. That's raw material providers, right? Um, then there is what's called CPAS, and there, there, there are two different kind of its categories like we already saw that the next one on the Twilio, right? That's what I would call the, the leaders. And then there are challengers. You can call it anyway, but uh, I, I would call it gold plating. That's basically having raw material, gold plating, raw material. There's no CPAS without raw material, right? Uh, almost no. Um, and then there's the fairy dust. <laughs> so the the question is what offer Nexmo at you said is a lot of marketing money. I think it's more because we know quite a lot of that what you can consume and how you consume it. And I have to say, these guys are better than others. And um, we work for some 
of, uh, the, po the, the, the parties here in the scene to improve what they have, to maybe get them closer to the, the leaders, right? So raw material, gold plate, and fairy dust. And maybe just now that's a logo chart. This is the logos we've played with in the last years. So we do not know everybody, but this is actually some trunk providers, number providers, and API and SDK providers, more or less perfect or not so perfect. And those, so we have hands-on experience with this, based on the things we did for Deutsche Telekom on behalf of Deutsche Telekom and what we do now in the company. So, um, so still perspective with that one, but this is the guys we have experience with. So we developed stuff on top of what they have, and um, I, you can read through these slides uh, afterwards. Maybe just um, talk about fairy dust a little bit. So, what makes a difference? I guess you know Twilio Flex, and there's a visual designer in Twilio too, so you don't even have to be a developer anymore, right? You can like, drag and drop and have complex call scenarios modeled without actually um, doing it yourself or understanding how it works. So there, there are interesting uh, stuff ongoing next month as well. I, from, from my, I know there are next month people here, so don't kill me in the break, right? Uh, that's the, the perspective from the above, not from the inside. Um, but Nexmo and, and Twilio are, from our perspective, actually the, the most evolved providers with a lot of complex features on top of APIs and SDKs. Of course, they have raw material and go playing, and the fairy dust is uh, that what comes next, right? Two-factor authentication as, an, as a service, right? Or a, a contact center as a service. You might know that Ing, Diva, that the bank, that the online bank, they moved away from KPN. I mean, these guys are so Dutch, it doesn't get more like the Netherlands, right? And they moved away from KPN to Twilio for, with all their data centers, uh, all their, like, you know, the call centers based in data centers on a global scale. What I don't know what it takes to take a Dutch company to move away from the Dutch telecommunication company for call centers, right? But Twilio did. And they actually have Flex. At that time, they didn't even have Flex. They just developed it out of this, I guess. But that's fairy dust. There are specific solutions that are not even APIs and SDKs anymore, and you have to build your stuff on top of that. And um, the question here, that's just showing the, the pros and the cons. And again, I'd only take the fairy dust, um, can read through the other ones. Um, they focus on the, 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 the consuming party experience, what to do with it and how to do it fast. Um, they, they have basically everything you could think of in the market, right? So look through Maximo and and um, and uh, Twilio product portfolio, it's 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 compelling, right? And um, they have almost global availability, at least in the relevant markets. So they have a lot of deals with raw material providers, and the pain points are expensive. Sebastian just showed it. It's like they charge for everything. Prices were like the raw material providers, which is like, how oh, are they doing this, right? So why is anyone like willing to pay for that? This amount of like two-factor authentication, you know, you sign into an app and you get an SMS with a code. It's ten lines of JavaScript. It's really simple and it's a database, <laughs> and it's so expensive if you consume it from Twilio and Exmo, right? Compared to the SMS and ten lines of code, hey, that's yeah. cool, right? That's fairy dust. You have to, you really have to be bold to sell it for like thirteen cents per registration. <laughs> And um, that's cool. It's expensive, but people actually are using it. Um, then there's not really a transparency like um, in, in the quality. So lots of trunks used. Uh, it's gray, I would call it, right? That's You might get into situations where you make phone calls and they're really not perfect. So um, I guess that's part of the business. And there's a risk for lock-in. I come to that later on. If you sign up with one of the two guys, really good ones, I mean, it's really difficult to get out of it again because you develop everything towards this, and then there. The, I, I would do the same if I would be in that position, right? So, I invest a lot of money into this, and then of course you do this, right? That's that's just the way it works. So, um, what's the dilemma on the market? Let's say it that way. Um, the same picture, right? But a different top. It's the players, number of players, number of developers, and size of the market. It's uh, already been said in the, in the morning in, in many of the different uh, aspects, 
So there is, on that side of the, of the picture, there is a lot of players, right? In each country, in each region, there are carriers or specialized providers of PBXs, et cetera, et cetera. So from the raw materials perspective, there's a huge number of, of providers. And they represent, I took that number from your, I, I didn't know the number, so a trillion dollar market. <coughs> I think you said 1.2 trillion, something like that. It's a huge market, right? And that's Sebastian as well, came up with some numbers. Just the one carrier uh, represents from the wholesale business, including voice, the same number as Twilio is doing on the global market. So huge market and many players and just a few developers being able, right? And very specialized system or tech stack being used. So it's Zip, it's SMPP, or if you go deeper, even SS7, James Lee, or the OSS, BSS, you know, world of, well, let's call it legacy, or the Asterix, the, the free switches and the, you know, you know them better than I do, I guess, but there's, it's a very special world and the number of people being able to consume and build complex features on that is small compared to the number of players. Of course, on the other side, it's exactly the opposite, right? Just a few players, a 10 billion market, I mean, whatever, whether it's eight or 12, I don't know, but this is 1% of the number we had on the other side. So just a few player, even if you take the challenges as well into account, it's like 10, maybe 15 companies are providing this like uh, on a bigger scale. And there's a huge number of developers they're not specialized. They know how to actually consume a REST API. And they, they, they program Node.js or JavaScript or maybe Python, right? We have guys, senior developers, many years of experience. They actually ask me, it's like, what do you mean with XML? Right? I'm, I'm too old for that, right? It's like, what, what do you mean with XML? What can I do with it? Is that some kind of strange notion of JSON, right? No, just for the, like engineers in the rooms, like these guys don't even remember XML, right? Now come with that plan that is an XML file on an external server. They just look at it and say, oh, okay, I need to read some book. So there are lots of people, but they don't know anything about communication technologies from the past, but they want to they wanna build, they're hired, they want to build services, right? Whatever that is, whether it's Uber or whatever kind of service, like these people actually develop these services and they uh, take the take most of the CPAS market, which is not as, as big as the other one, but much more accessible for a big number. So now for those up here, they're, they're actually, the, let's call them the consuming parties, right? For them, it's difficult to select a vendor, right? Because they're expensive, they're kind of difficult to handle, <laughs> but there are lots of them and there are few here. So really difficult to select the right vendor. How do I do that? Um, then of course the vendor lock-in, you know, they're like, I can choose from the really good ones here, but I still have vendor lock-in. Um, so the problem does go away, right? There is the market. I think there are a lot of uh, things in the morning where you describe the market is, um, it is moving. There are lots of uh, companies buying other companies. And so they, they realized the investors putting a lot of money into it. They realized there's a big market, but actually there are lots of players that, are, that don't even count to be part of the market. But I think actually they're part of the market. They can be part of the market, let's call it that way. And then there's the changing requirements, you know, the, the Uber case, that's a, that's a good example. They started uh, doing this and then switched to Twilio because they had problems with delivering SMS. Tui was good enough, they delivered the SMS within, I don't know whether you use Uber, you know, use, you, you book a car and you get an SMS just before the car arrives, go to go to wherever the pickup is, the, the driver will be there in, in a second, right? The second SMS you actually receive when you're close to where you want to go to, and then they say, hey, pick up all your stuff in the car, don't don't leave anything in there. So you, you get two SMS, right? And they need to be in time. And Tui was able to do that. Now Uber decided they're, they're actually account for like 15% of Twilio's revenue, or they used to. Now Uber decided that's too expensive. Now they scale, right? They really have a lot of users and that gets expensive, right? If you pay the Twilio SMS price, and I'm sure they get a better price from what you see on the website, 
Um, so, but they actually decided to go with not just Twilio, but others. For instance, uh, BlackBerry. You might remember BlackBerry, right? They have quite a massive IP messaging platform at the moment. And so they, they actually got away from the, the lock-in, right? But it takes them a hell of a lot of effort to do so. So, and there, there are other reasons why, not just the scaling, it's uh, other reasons too, why it's actually it's a difficult situation. And um, so that's, without using the, the buzzwords, I would say, um, I, I would describe the situation from the different perspectives. So now, um, taking in, into consideration, first of all, of course, you could now, I think from up here, right? we, we don't want to try to be a provider in the market, so no player, but you can try to uplift those guys, enable them, what Sebastian said, there, there are some of the carriers that try to expose their capabilities via APIs and SDKs. So lift them up to, let's say, APIs and SDKs. I mean, there, Vazu actually, the, the talk in the morning, I didn't know you have, actually didn't know you have a platform. It's, I, that was new to me. I knew what you were doing, but I didn't know how you do it, right? So there are a couple of players, Vazu, Telestacks, Rascom, etc. You can just use them, have one zip trunk underneath, configure the zip trunk, and you have APIs and SDKs, right? So I don't get why those stuff on guys I used to work for don't go there. It's cheap, it's easy. They might not know the market, they might not think that the market is interesting compared to the existing revenue, but still, it's easy. I don't get it. However, it, that would be interesting. That would be interesting to actually open up options to, to this, because they are legal, they're local, and they have high quality, right? That's the, the core business of those guys, that they actually provide this. Kind of boring, but they do. The next step is you could actually have a service application. You could integrate, you could enable those guys, and you can come up and at t is doing it with the API, what do you call it, API Garden, right? Um, and uh, KPN is doing it, etc. There, there are a couple of guys providing this uh, in a way that you could have one place where you can go and, and actually consume it, the stuff, but it's still not integrated. It's just an aggregated perspective. So, but still, next one is in here with KPN, Twilio is not, right? And then Happy Days, I think, is in and, um, Kenny, Kenny is, Kenny is as well in from the communication perspective. So ribbon. So that that's one thing you could do. So that would already kind of open up the system, the, the ecosystem, and and give options to those guys the, that actually are the consuming parties. Um, sorry, I was too fast. I already told gave you that. That's interesting. WhatsApp actually is doing the same at the moment. WhatsApp and Uber is like the biggest customer of Twilio, or used to be, and, and WhatsApp as well decided to actually move away, not 100%, but move away from Twilio only. So um, you can just read the, the, the slide. It's, it's quite interesting, actually, to, to look at it. And the next steps, if, if you think about it, one of the problems for the consuming parties, I can tell you, yeah, I spent a hell lot of nights on that, right? Is you buy numbers, you provision numbers from that provider, you use that zip trunk provider to terminate, you have uh, that and that capability from another provider. So we integrated like in the same service, five different providers for different reasons. And you know what? We were not able to sync data between clients. It, it's, it's a hell, and you pay a lot we had a team of 90 people and 70 were engineers. We were not able to sync data. I mean, any kind of service you use is normal. It's syncing data, right? In the communication realm, actually now providers like Nextmo and Twilio are providing it. They have conversation APIs or whatever they're called where you can grab the timeline, right? You don't have to have a concept to have a database to store this, to sync it between the clients to not drain the battery of your mobile application, your mobile phones by polling all the time, et cetera, et cetera. It's a big problem. It's such a trivial feature actually, but it's, it was not implemented two years ago. And the same thing is you wanna, you wanna use multiple providers for different reasons, geography, compliance, 
feature set, security, et cetera, et cetera. There are reasons, right? And you have to build this yourself. And it's not a five developer team. It's a 25 developer team, right? It's really expensive to do so. Of course, Uber and, and WhatsApp, they can afford it. But Uber used to be small too, right? They, they did not have that many money at the beginning. So that's why not have a universal API? And uh, I think Sebastian mentioned it, that the Twimmel, like Twilio is providing something called Twilio markup language. They have verbs. Uh, it's, a, it's not a standard, but actually you can see people, like we talked to the Telestax guys, said, yeah, yeah, you know, we're planning to provide Twimmel because clients can change from Twilio to any other kind of provider because they implement the Twilio standard. I mean, if you make it there, right, you kind of made it. <laughs> if, if the others start implementing your stuff. So it would be interesting just from a theoretical perspective to have a universal API. One API that provides everything, and all these guys are underneath. And as a consumer, like that, which is like wishful thinking. You are here. You just use this. You don't have any login. You get the best possible um, condition. You know, I need a I need a high quality and CLI. That's the provider. Go this route. I need a number in India. That's the provider. I get a number. I get a number in India, right? Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. So you would choose all the nice features you want to have via like a de facto standardized uh, universal API, that would be great. Very theoretical. But there was a question in the first, um, could you think, I think you asked the question, right? Could you think any kind of way that the unified communication would be like uh, all the same? Um, that would be different. It would just be like a de facto standard exposing it, but there would be still a lot of companies being players in the market. And um, that's the, of course, <laughs> that would be the perfect solution to the consuming party because no lock-in, no vendor selection. You just sign up, you get all the features, and those guys make money with what you do with it because they get paid by it. But of course, nothing is, uh, there's nothing like this on the market at the moment. And I, I guess especially for that point, it's not really wishful thinking because you want to make your share in the market and you want to have your barriers to make it difficult to change between the one and the other provider. So um, that is maybe, that's the last thing I, last slide. Uh, what, what we've done, apart from what I told you at the very beginning, what we are as an agency, how we make money. Uh, we are actually strong believers. We want to contribute. So we, what we do is, Apart from making, from developing and automating for money, uh, we implement in our spare time open source <coughs> components which we think are meaningful in in this picture, right? So that's more like theory. But if you don't have that structure, you you just do something. Especially since we do not want to become part of the the, the, the players on the market. And um, so there's one thing. You can click on it. I, I, I might do it. I don't know what time is it. How much time do I have left? No, no time left. Okay. okay. Um, <laughs> this is so we did a, a reference implementation for iOS developers because iOS is very special for anyone who wants to have an iOS app. It's really difficult. Uh, so we, we came up with something that is open source. You can download, but it's not meant to be like a soft phone. You can use the code. Uh, we have integrated Twilio and Apto as SDKs, um, uh, WebRTC and Zip SDKs, and one of the providers. And we gave um, a description how you could develop your own adapter to connect to any of the providers, right? So just go there and read it. There's a link in the things. Or there's another thing that, uh, I, well, as I said, there are graphic user interfaces, um, like will you provide the, the visual designer. Uh, we have started implementing a visual designer based on open source. It's called Node-RED. Uh, we've integrated a very small German provider, it's called Zipgate, but now we're implementing Twilio. And the idea is basically that you can drag and drop and configure your complex call scenarios with a graphic user interface. And we do step-by-step -step integrate uh, a lot of more um, providers that you could actually do this on top of the providers. And uh, we are actually, at the moment, there's Sam is sitting there, he's based in London. 
Uh, we're actually doing a scraping on all the providers on their conditions, prices, qualities, etc. Put it in the database, and the, 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 the long-term idea is to provide something where you could use a universal API. Today we would use Twimmel because it's a de facto what people do, and um, have a real-time decision on which would be the right route to place that call or to send that message, right? Um, with all the different providers. So we are trying to automate the scraping of the conditions from the different providers to have a database to make that decision. Yeah, that's, that's it. Thank you, Mark.